So my name is Mimi and I'm a sophomore at USC. My major is Business Cinematic Arts. Uh, I've been studying French for... Well, I've been practicing French for about 9 to 10 years now. But um, I was learning French for 6 years all the way to high school. And then I came to USC in America. Uh, and then I'm a member of the French club where I continue to speak French with my friends. I grew up in Singapore and I started learning French in middle school, mm -hmm. at the start of middle school, which is the seventh grade, mm -hmm. and then all the way till uh, the end of high school. So that's about six to five years. French speaking community in Singapore is pretty small, but I wouldn't say that I felt lonely or I felt like the odd one out because we go to a specialized third language school where students go to learn French, German, or uh, Spanish. So yeah, and there's an audience concert in Singapore where we can go to, you know, watch some movies, um, read some French books, and just get to know more about the French culture. I really like the art and the humanities, and as we all know, France was historically the capital of the art in Europe and even, I would say, in the world. So definitely, the French culture played a huge role in the development of arts in the world and so naturally French would be the first language that I would want to learn as my third language. <laughs> so I speak English. I'm born in China so um, I speak Chinese and then in China there's a lot of dialects like in India so I speak the Sichuanese dialect which is part of the south, south central region and then on top of that I speak French and I'm trying, trying to learn Spanish. <laughs> Well, in general, I guess not a lot of people know a third language, not a lot of people are trilingual, so um, when it comes to looking for a job, definitely employers will be more impressed if they see that, oh, you are familiar with a third culture. And um, personally for me, my major is business cinematic arts, which means that I would like to enter the film industry next time. And France has one of the biggest box office in Europe, so um, it's a good uh, launch pad to the European market in general. So knowing French would be really useful if you know I want to work in the film industry. Well, the French really like Hollywood movies, and in general, blockbusters in America do pretty well overseas, in France, in Germany. So uh, yeah, that means a lot of people show up for the films. There's a lot of business there. There's a lot of demand for. Hollywood movies or even um, Hollywood European co-productions. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, I'm actually working for this film sales and distribution company called I Am Global. And coincidentally, the SVP of International Business Development is a Parisian who's been working in LA for 20 years. So, you know, there's like an instant connection. I'm like, oh, I speak French. And he's like, oh, really? I'm from Paris. So, yeah, and he says that uh, we've got, he says that the company has offices based in London and they have a lot of business with the French. So, yeah, learning French would be a huge advantage if you want to work in a, you know, multinational company like I Am Global. I have been to Paris three or four times to visit my friends and family there. And I have also backpacked and couch surfed um, in certain regions of France alone last summer and it was a great experience. I visited Normandy mm -hmm. and uh, Carcassonne mm -hmm. then I also visited of course Paris and uh, a few of France's most beautiful villages. It was beautiful. Um, What's the name of it? Is it called Lang Languedoc? Languedoc? Yeah, Languedoc. That one is the one with the lavender Right, the flowers. Yes, Provence, Provence. Ah, uh, yeah, there's yeah. also uh, lavender um, in London. Yeah, exactly. And uh, there's one by the river, Dordogne River. Dordogne. One, yeah. Dordogne. Yeah, Dordogne. Yeah, Dordogne. Somewhere there. Mm -hmm. And then there's the one with, like, they call it the Little Colorado. Ah, uh, wait, with wait, the wait. red. It's in Luberon. Oh, yeah, 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 Luberon. Yes. And then there's another one with the yellow stones. Like the whole village is made of stones, like pebbles. Les autres. A gord, gord. A gord. Yeah, gord. 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 Okay, okay, gord. Near Avignon and Aix. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. So I've also been to Avignon, Aix-en-Provence, Arles. 
Arle? Yeah. 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 That's about it, I guess. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I love it. Especially when I did couch surfing, which is a form of very low budget traveling where you um, look for locals to house you. So I get to interact with the locals and then they brought me to do touristy stuff like eating escargot. <laughs> yeah, so it was really fun. How does escargot taste? Oh, I love it. I don't know why so many people don't like it. <laughs> yeah. So I was trekking all the way from, I can't remember where, but from my starting point, I trekked through like five kilometers of like jungle, um, farmlands and like by the river all the way to um, this very beautiful village by Dognon River. Okay. Yeah, I was trekking alone and it was a very, very uh, out of this world experience. <laughs> you know, you kind of born with nature and then you just, yeah, it just, oh, I'm not scared. <laughs> okay, next one. Well, I visited, oh, the Loire Valley and also um, where Van Gogh, I visited the room of Van Gogh where he lived during the last few months of his life. And then we also visited Monet's house and the lily pond where he painted the famous paintings. So that was kind of very memorable. Thank you.